Moss. I suppose you don't even know who the babe is either. <laughs> <laughs> it's blood. What? Chewing tobacco? Backy, man. What do you do with it? You're killing me, Smalls. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes and back when DC Comics and, and Diamond were kind of coming back from the pandemic and we heard the news about them changing distributors and a uh, person I would, would often talk, we were like, you know, DC's got some real momentum here. Marvel, Marvel had gone pencils down. They didn't have much exciting going on. Yes, they had, I think they had had one issue of Empire. Nobody was really looking forward to that. You know, Ten of Swords was kind of on the horizon, but they didn't have a lot of really hot, uh, ongoing titles. King and Black obviously was the thing people were really looking forward to. We didn't even know when that was going to come out. But DC, you, you know, they had Batman 3 Jokers coming out shortly. They, I think they just started up Dark Knight's Death Metal and Joker War. We're all going to be hitting all kind of at the same time. And Persh and I were like, DC has a real chance to make a go of it, to maybe be, you know, to, to at least equal Marvel's uh, sales, maybe even eclipse them for a while and, and and who knows how they play their cards? Maybe they could end up being number one. Yeah. Now, obviously, that was several months ago, and Purse is here back around the channel. We're going to revisit this idea, and maybe where does DC go from here? How do, well do they capitalize on on all that momentum? And obviously, with me here, here with me to talk about this is El Percherino himself, the Poobov comics. Perch, how you doing? Yeah, doing great. Thanks for having me back on, and it's good to revisit this. You're you're uh, you're right. I'm remembering this history that we talked about. Yeah, it was, it was very interesting, and it kind of played out a lot of the ways that we thought it would, but uh, de we definitely need to talk about what DC Comics has done or is, is about to do. Before we get into the details, I do want to say, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, give us a thumbs up if you enjoy this video, give us a thumbs down if you don't. Either way, we definitely want to hear from you guys in the comments section. Do you think DC capitalized on their momentum? Are, you know, are they on the upward trajectory right now? Uh, you know, Obviously, they do have Endless Winter, Future State, Dark Knight's death metal is still ongoing. Yeah. I don't know. Perch for me personally, just thinking about it, you know, they had all this money and they had all the spotlight kind of on their titles. They were out selling Marvel uh, quite handedly, especially with three Jokers. Uh, Joker War was, was hugely successful. But it doesn't really feel like they ever announced anything or, or had had anything to show everybody what was next, the, the next thing to be excited about. It doesn't feel like the interest in in this winter field is tepid, to say you know to say the least, and the kind of the same thing with Future State. Yeah, I agree. I, I think um, you know DC. If you, if you're looking at like the what went right, what went wrong column, um, you know months ago they were going to have their comics out the gate. They're going to have some compelling comics out early. Marvel was going to this every other week shipping strategy for a while, and it was basically giving DC a great lead. And I'm, I'm sure if we had the numbers to look at, we'd see some reflection of that in the summer or, or the you know July and, and probably even going into August. I think DC probably did take a lot of that share. Uh, they're were, they were pushing out a lot more comics, and they, in some cases pushing out comics from Marvel, pushing out none. So, of course, they're going to take it. Uh, but... They did lose that momentum. I mean, for me, I look at it and I think that they had a, a great thing lined up for themselves, and they failed to capitalize on it. And and a lot of it actually is rooted in in this uh, another thing you and I were talking about. God, it must be back in May. Of DC did, does not manage their own marketing. They don't manage their own what's coming out. They they largely let other people do it. I mean, Bleeding Cool was was scooping their stuff on five G, and then. The web news sites were talking about Lunar and UCS much more than DC was. And I think they've let other people continue to kind of market what they do. And that a lot of that interest and goodwill has has either faded or gotten very confused over time. Yeah, this is I, I'm just shocked that they had they didn't announce like have something in that last issue of Batman Three Jokers and those last issues of Joker War with information on these new creative teams in the direction in March. I understand they want to keep, you know, their cards close to the vest or to the chest, but, um, you know, the interest isn't really high in future state. They surely have had to have seen that by now. They could have gotten a graphic out. Well, a lot of the people and, and it included the people I talked to in the company, you know, they'll, they'll refer to future state of look, it's us kind of reclaiming some of what had already been been done for generation five and 
just just, just try to put all that stuff together. And they'll, they'll say things like it was never meant to be a huge thing. It was just meant to, you know, basically tee us up for the next thing. And that kind of tepid response to this event, I, I mean, I've, I've heard this from artists and writers directly. Uh, you know, I, I, it, it's just, it's, it's odd. I think, but I think the other thing that happened there is death metal, death metal somehow lost some of its momentum. Um, it, it was, if you think about till to June and, and that time period, like there was a lot of excitement around death metal. You, you had, and including even kind of who the infected were back before and, and hell rising and this Luther Batman who last battle. And I mean, you, you, that you didn't never really loved all those series, but there was some excitement going into, to death metal. And then death metal number one came out and I think still sold really well. And there's some excitement, but it's like the, the, you just don't see people talking about death metal online. Like at all. I, I, it's, it's strange. I personally, you know, I didn't really like Dark Knight's metal all that much. I, you know, Batman and Laughs really isn't my thing. So I've been reading death metal, and uh, it's not really exciting for me. But I, I, I'm with you. There are some people in the in the comment section that are really excited about it. But you don't, if you say something bad about death metal, you don't get a million comments saying that you're a fool, like you do with some other series. Most notably, James Tynan's Batman. Sure, and and uh, Ten of Swords. If you, I mean, there's there's some rabid fans that are that are, and I'm not. It's not that it's, it's good or bad. I mean, I'm reading it's it's fine. Um, I think the core series is still fine. I think Snyder's doing some interesting stuff. Capullo's artwork is top notch. Everything is great, but it is um, just that the the energy of that event is is it, it's just not there. It's a Ten of Swords has sucked a lot of the air out of the room. I think Joker War did as well, and and you have just there's just a lot less interest than I would expect for what is supposed to be kind of the last big. DC event before things change around. Uh, the other problem there is that, you know, it's, can you, do you, for example, right now know how many issues are in death metal? What tie-ins are coming? Like it, they, they added stuff to it. There's, there's just, there's no real idea of, of how long, how big this thing is going. All we know is it ends in January. Um, so it's, it's just, I don't know. They've rolled out some things like you mentioned endless winter before. That was rolled out somewhat mysteriously. People were trying to speculate, is this the new DC that we're getting after Death Metal? Is it tying in? No, it's just a month-long storyline of kind of a bunch of issues. With, you know, it's a placeholder. It's a placeholder. And it's like, okay, well, here, here's Future State. Is that the new future? Is this what we're looking forward to? Oh, no, it's two months, and it's a placeholder again. And, and so you, you hear this stuff, and it's like, and then the, the most recent word we've heard for DC in March is, you know, Batman will keep its numbering. Tinian's, you know, lining up kind of the trial of punchline and some of these other things going into 2021. And you're, you're reading that going, well, that doesn't sound different from what's happening right now. So are we getting a big kind of relaunch in March or is it just, you know, DC continues? It's a, that's, there's a lot of confusion about what DC is doing and it's not all good. It's not all bad, but none of it's getting people really, really pumped and really excited. Absolutely. And everything just is kind of wound down. Even, you know, Green Lantern season two is still ongoing, but there's almost like that thing just kind of went off a cliff as far as I, I don't hear anyone talking about it. Obviously, the Flash just changed over with creative teams. You can tell that story is a placeholder. They're just spinning, you know, they're spinning yeah. in place waiting for something real to happen. Red Hood's over. Batgirl's over. It feels like uh, Nightwing probably is over. Like everything's kind of wound down, uh, you know. It almost feels like DC is expecting some of their their customers to wait upwards of 120 days for a new comic that isn't Batman. No, exactly. I, I it feels like they wound down too quickly. This is the kind of feel I usually get with comics around middle of December, when we know that the last two weeks of the month are usually pretty going to be pretty weak, and then we're going to start things up again in January. And it feels like it's October. You know, this was really feeling like it was happening last month and it's like you wound down too quickly and and then you have two placeholder events and then the thing that maybe you're supposed to get excited about i'm sure there will be some cool moments in endless winter i'm sure there's gonna be some breakout characters in future state and all the rest but it's uh it's it's a very uh, again it's we, they had momentum they they were out the gate first they were putting some things in place I think Marvel got a little lucky with Empire being more successful than they were expecting by nature of just, you know, people were excited to read something Marvel. So they, they did something there, but DC had, had the wind at their backs. They, they had some momentum and it, it seemed like they largely just handed it away. And 
it's 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 peculiar because I think there was an opportunity there for them to really take it and run with it, and they they missed it. Obviously, the ongoing Batman is the best on best selling ongoing in the, in the industry. That'll be ending in December. Bendis' Superman run is also ending in December. We won't see any of those series up again until March. And really, the only thing going on, you know, that's also kind of when Dark Knight's Death Metal, like, they're putting a lot of, uh, like, cards in the Tom King basket. He's going to have Batman, Catwoman, Rorschach still be gone going, and Strange Adventures. Outside of that, the only real notable series that's going to be going is Deceased. Yeah. Well, and even that's that's starting to wind up, you know? Yeah, so, is that one over in like January? Uh, I think got so. issue five of seven, right? That's right. So the beginning of January, that's that's coming to an end. Um, yeah, again, it's 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 it seems like the planning is really weird. Like if you were at DC and you were managing that company, you would not have them release their comics this way. You would not schedule it this way. It's a very very risky schedule. Um, and I was uh, talking elsewhere about uh, DCU. And how that whole thing teed up, where you had a bunch of storylines, they tried to wrap it up. You had two months of convergence, and then you went to DCU, and it was an absolute failure. You saw sales just plummet because everybody had a clear jumping off point with convergence. And then what came out on the other end was was different enough; it didn't hook people back in. And and this this I don't think it's exactly the same this time, but th there has to be some people worried at DC that they're going to run into that scenario again. Also, what's interesting, we don't know what the creative teams, we know James Tynan's still going to be on Batman. I believe we know that Mariko Tamaki is still going to be on Wonder Woman. I believe, is it Kevin Sh Shinnick? Yes. Will still be the, the Flash writer, but most of them are kind of up in the air. But I, you know, I was looking at the creative teams. I just did a video with um, Pele uh -huh. uh, yesterday, the day before, where we were talking about the creative teams on Dark Knight's Death Metal, Last Tales of the DC Universe. And I'm, I'm seeing some names in there, and I'm like wondering, there's enough names that we know are going to be be with characters moving forward. Then I'm starting to see Cecil's Castellucci still in there. We're mm -hmm. seeing Mark Wade on a Superman book. We're seeing Gail Simone back in there. Chris Sabella, for some reason, <laughs> on a yep. book. Like Jeff Lemire, I think, was on Green Lantern. I'm, I'm starting to get the feeling that maybe those are some of the creative teams moving forward. Do you think I'm way off base on that one? No, I think I think there's it, there's some good possibilities. I mean, I think the, the clue there is who is doing work, uh, who is not doing work in future state, and a lot of those names you mentioned are not, but they're showing up in in these death metal pieces, and I think that that is them getting ready to jump into the DC universe in some form. So I think most of those names will come over. I think Cecil is definitely going to be on a book. Like a um, Batman, Bat Family book, right? But it potentially, yeah, I, I think insanity. Like just what was what she just did to Batgirl. I've never seen anything. Yeah. She makes Tom King, you know, look like Marv Wolfman. Yeah, it's it's. I I I, I, get, I don't I can't explain what it is they're doing because I think they had they just had a ton of momentum and it it feels like they intentionally are steering away from it. Um, and and I still do not understand why they allow everybody except themselves to dictate <laughs> what's coming out. I mean, nobody, they are not in charge of, of their marketing and their promotion at all. It's, it's YouTube channels. It's, it's new sites. Hey, yeah. Where did we learn about them going to this new DC Omniverse sure. setup moving forward? We certainly didn't hear from DC comics and I can tell you right there, if there are people at DC listening to this video right now, I've gotten a lot of feedback from, from my viewers. A lot of the DC hardcores are very apprehensive and not exactly on board because you haven't sold it to them. Yeah, and, and I don't know if they expect just the community to sell it for them or, or what. But, I mean, it's it's you got to get some people out there and, and start pushing what it is you're trying to do. You can't, you can't just roll the comics out and assume people are just going to show up. It's a very strange approach. Well, I mean, you can do that with Batman. Uh, sure, you could do it with Batman. Yeah, but, but Batman but you can't for your company. Batman. You, you can't do that with Superman anymore because you yeah. devalued the character so much. Yeah. Although I do think people will jump on a Superman that doesn't have Brian Michael Bennett or someone they associate with him on the title just to, to send a message, at least early on. No, I, I, I agree. I, I think it, it would be very easy. The, the fans are, are screaming for it. They want DC to come out and kind of explain, here's what we're going to do. And they had the, the fandom 
whole thing. I mean, DC arguably more than other publishers had this thing. And, and once That's again, it was yeah. an opportunity, opportunity of a lifetime. And they just, what did they announce? Yeah, it, nothing. John I mean, Ridley's Batman that we already knew about. Yeah, it's it's very weird. And it would take almost no time for Jim Lee or somebody representing that company to sit down, film 10 minutes and say, look, this is what we're doing. Here's what you need to know. And here's what you should get pumped about. It would take almost no time. I mean, the, the crazy part is, I mean, you and I could write that script for him in most cases. Why don't they do that? Just hey, please. If Jim do Lee that. doesn't want to go out there and get the word going. You know, Scott Snyder is great with the public. Let him be your hype man. You know, James Tynan does a very good job letting his his customers know what's going on with his, what is it, the Tiny Onion or whatever his newsletter is. Uh, they have people that know how to market and communicate with their audience. And uh, like, I would get them out front and center and, and get let people know what's happening because I just don't see it for future state. Obviously, people are going to buy the probably the Superman, you know, uh, Planet Hulk type story, the, the Batman titles. I think the, the new Wonder Woman will do quite well. Yeah. Other than that. Yeah. I, I and you, I mean, you hit on a, you hit on a major point there. I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. Scott Snyder, Tinny, and they, they have absolutely people in their company who are good at this, who are in many cases messaging stuff out. Snyder is all over social media sometimes trying to explain what's going on. Good for him for doing that, but get, get, get your company. I mean, get the company to do that. That's that's how you will win. And I think there are a lot of comic fans that were ready and anxious and excited to support DC and put them in that number one slot, uh, you know, just just four or five months ago. And today they feel largely abandoned, like God, nobody knows what's going on. Yeah, it's just it's just strange. But I mean, we were I was like, man, they've got all the momentum of the world. They got to capitalize on it. You'll get the word out. Tell us what, what's happening next. And it's like endless winter. OK, this seems pretty strange. That's not going to affect anything. Then you get Future State. Okay, this is 5G with a new name. And you're even saying that at, at DC, they no, oh, this isn't supposed to be a big deal. Then why don't you release any other comics that aren't black label at the same time? Sure. It feels like the franchise for two months. I, I again I it, it's it is the strangest, uh, this is the strangest approach ever I've seen for a company rolling out properties. It, it would be like, uh, I, I don't know, I, there's, there's, I don't want to throw an analogy out there, but I mean, this this is weird. This is not normal. And it's it's basically putting all of their future on their comics and fans just kind of- Brand loyalty. Hoping. Yeah, and brand loyalty. Just They're hoping you show up. And if you show up and you buy it, then great. And, you know, if the work is great, that's that's wonderful. but. You should there. That's what marketing is for. Come on. Hey, it wouldn't have been the, the worst thing in the world to have delayed three jokers even more and start releasing it in December. It wouldn't have been a bad idea. I mean, given how they long could have done it. I, I mean, it, three jokers did incredibly well. Uh, so, you know, that was a good thing for DC, but it's it, it, even there, it, it feels like it's, it's already gone and it's in the past. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. a very uncertain future. That would have been an an, an opportune up a great opportunity to throw something in there in December, January, February in those three issues of three jokers that people were gonna buy no matter what, because they've been looking forward to it for five years. The nice big splash page of all your future plans. They just wasted the, the opportunity to get people excited. You know, I'm sure they needed they probably needed to bring in some revenue for the last quarter and stuff for to get their numbers up for for their corporate, you know, accounting and stuff like that, you know, so they could show it to their bosses. But they already had Joker War. They already had their Dark Knight's Death Metal. Like I would have delayed it. I think in yeah. hindsight, they probably wish they would have. I, I think they should have absolutely. So I don't know, Perch. You know, where does DC Comics go from here? Do you have any you know, last thoughts on it? I I don't even know. It just feels like they wasted the oper a wonderful opportunity. I mean, the big thing that, that they needed that uh, we want to see where they go is that the the March creative teams start being announced and they're really strong, you know, stellar teams that get people very excited about seeing their take on a comic. And, you know, there's a sense of of almost what they did with Rebirth, like we're going to go and we're going to take tell some amazing stories, this whole omniverse idea of being able to go in and and you know, we won't worry so much about them all connecting. We're not going to interfere with different events bouncing into things. People are going to be able to tell a strong story. It's a great idea. Um, you get some great creative teams on that, and that'll be great. Good comics. 
However, like you mentioned before, some of the names that are being floated around are not new, not terribly exciting, haven't delivered good takes or in some cases terrible takes on comics. Uh, I mean, are we excited in March for Brian Michael Bendis' Justice League? I, I I don't know. Uh, if it, it feels like that's where we're going, and and if that's where we're going, then it's it's not going to feel new. And then you're gonna, people or fans are going to wonder, wait, why did we do an endless winter and a future state thing in the middle of all this? I know you want to reclaim some of this old work, and I know all the rest, but couldn't you use this time to actually come out the gate with something stronger and better? But but I guess this is what we got. Yeah. Strangest thing in the world. Perch, thank you so much for, for visiting here and kind of going back over some of the things we've been covering heavily, you know, months ago as the pandemic was kind of winding up. We, we were starting to get some ideas what what was what was happening. We were like, DC's got the opportunity, and it feels like they um, they snatched defeat from the jaws of victory once again. They did. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs>